<laughs> this video is about snowshoes. Ta da! Mm -mm 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 -mm. You're just humming your own theme song. I did just do that, didn't I? <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. This is my show, gosh darn. So a lot of you have actually asked for a video on how to choose snowshoes, which is awesome. Snowshoeing is on the rise and it's becoming ever more popular every year. Ever and ever more popular. So when we think of like old school snowshoes, you might be picturing something like this. Same general concept, lots of new technology. Excuse me, sorry. With all the advances in snowshoe technology, that also means that there's a lot of different options and lots of different types of snowshoes to choose from, which is great, but it can be a little bit confusing. Buy it because it's cute. <laughs> Don't buy it because it's cute, guys. Buy it because it's functional. That's correct. The first step in how to choose snowshoes is to determine how you're planning on using your snowshoes. Are you planning on doing a lot of like uphill hikes, or are you gonna be taking your dog for a walk on like a flat, snowy surface? I've actually used all four of these types of snowshoes, and like my personal favorite are these Atlas ones, but that's just like based on what I like to do. So figure out how you plan on using them before you dive into choosing them. Yeah, that rhymed. All right, anatomy of a snowshoe. We have the snowshoe itself, which is like this bar that goes around and then this piece of fabric. And then your foot is gonna go on this thing, which we call the binding. Even though there's a huge variance in bindings, they're all gonna have three main straps. We'll have one that goes around the back of your heel, strap that goes over the top of your foot, and then some sort of strap around your toe. This snowshoe binding actually has this like toe cage, but then you can see on our foam snowshoes, we just have those three sandal straps. Same thing on our plastic snowshoes. If you really are doing a lot of like elevation gain, you probably want a snowshoe that's going to fit your foot really securely. And that might mean that it has like a little bit more adjustability. Adjustability? Adjustability. This is your crampon. So the crampon on the snowshoe is going to determine how much traction or grip you have. And you'll see different types of crampons and different types of traction that are designed for uh, like more slippery or more powdery conditions. Some snowshoes will have a heel bar, which is this guy right here. Having a heel bar for me is really important because I do a lot of backpacking. Not all snowshoes have this, but the snowshoes that do, this is designed to pop up like that. And then what's gonna happen is that your foot is gonna hit that heel bar as opposed to coming all the way down to the snowshoe, which is gonna make it a lot easier to hike up on an incline. Heel bar, binding, cramp on, snowshoe. There are main materials that you'll come across, and those are aluminum snowshoes, and then plastic and foam snowshoes. If you're looking for a snowshoe that can take you on some like challenging hikes with a lot of elevation change, you're likely gonna wind up with an aluminum snowshoe. There's a lot of variety of like bindings and crampons and different features of the snowshoe, but the downside is that these tend to be more expensive, and they're also a little bit heavier and fairly loud. But literally, they're like, they like make more noise. Eh, versus? You can hear that, right? Look, if you're like hunting Bigfoot, you don't want these snowshoes. They will hear you. <laughs> so the next type of snowshoe or next material for snowshoes are these plastic ones. Plastic snowshoes tend to be the less expensive snowshoe option. These are great because they're lightweight. They're generally really durable. If you've ever rented snowshoes, you've probably rented snowshoes that look like these. Downsides, they just don't have as many features. And the major benefit of these is just that they are a less expensive option. That's that. So this is a foam snowshoe, boom. So some of the pros of foam snowshoes are that they are generally a lot lighter. They're pretty quiet to walk with. They also provide a little bit of insulation between your foot and the snow, which is just kind of like a fun nifty thing to have. The downside of foam snowshoes is that these are not as durable and they also are not meant for walking uphill. As soon as you start doing something where you're heading uphill, you're going to look for a snowshoe that has uh, more like features that are designed for making that uphill possible. Probably just like looking at these you can see, but these are going to provide a lot better traction, the metal ones, than this just like foam snowshoe. So if what you're encountering is like really icy snow, you probably want to go with something that has a little bit better traction. Okay, so we've talked about materials and crampons and bindings and uh, different features, but what does this all mean for choosing snowshoes? The long and short of it is that you just have to pick a snowshoe that will be best for the type of hiking and backpacking that you plan on doing. If you're walking on flat, powdery surfaces, go ahead and get a foam snowshoe. And if you want something that'll be better for backpacking trips or for like more intense hikes, maybe opt for a composite snowshoe with a heavier crampon. Great.
So snowshoes come in different sizes and that number is determining how long and how big the snowshoe is. Snowshoes are sized based on your weight, not on your shoe size. And that weight is not just how much you weigh, but also how much you weigh when you're carrying all your stuff. You can actually add a tail extension onto the end. So if you find that you really are like needing a variable size of snowshoe, say you're sharing them with a friend who has a different weight than you, this might be a really good option. So once you've determined what your weight is going to be, then you can take a look at the size charts for snowshoes to decide which size you need to purchase. And if you are on the border between two different sizes, even after you've calculated the weight of the stuff you'll be carrying, it's generally recommended to size down just because it'll be easier to maneuver those snowshoes. But again, keep in mind, smaller snowshoes, more sink, larger snowshoes, or lift. Yeah. It's getting cold and my mouth is not a little icicle baby. Hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of the different types of materials and features that you'll find on a snowshoe, as well as how to pick the right size. Snowshoeing is a great way to like extend your hiking season, especially if you live in an area that gets tons of snow because it allows us to still get out on the trails. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful, let me know. And if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you all in the wild. Go snowshoeing, y'all. Get out of here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>